let's introduce our guests for today. Uh, two very special guests. I would I uh, would say something that I've really been looking forward to. Uh, Matei and Susanna Dolinai, uh, who together form the crew of the wildlife filmmaking uh, enterprise Living Zoology. Hi guys, thank you so much for being here today. It's a true pleasure. Hello, hello, hello from the Czech Republic. Hi, yeah, greetings from Brno, the second largest city in the Czech Republic. We are happy to be here with you. Yeah, it's an honor to be here and we are looking forward for this interview. Oh yeah, me too, definitely. And we already we already have some someone commenting. Molly mm -hmm. from Pittsburgh. Hi Molly, thank you for joining. Hello. Okay. So, uh, guys, you are uh, you are fil you are filmmakers. So, and well, the first uh, personally, I, I first uh, became acquainted with your work uh, three years at three or four years ago um, when I uh, when I started watching your uh, your videos on your uh, on your YouTube channel, and I was already I was already like almost like almost mesmerized because it was completely it was a completely different kind of uh dif dif completely different way of portraying wildlife compared to like what i what i was used to to seeing on like animal planet or even even national geographic perhaps so uh just so we will we'll get back to to that to the specifics of that later but first uh first i would like to start by asking like how how did you get into filmmaking specifically because i know you've always been passionate about about nature, about wildlife, but when when did when did the did the idea uh, of like going into uh, into documentaries uh, take form and become a reality? Mm, um, it was I would say it was a long process, um, but the the main start of uh, everything uh, was around two thousand fourteen uh, when you know. Uh, we were always um, going to nature a lot and we really enjoyed uh, taking photos mostly and Susanna uh, is a great photographer. She's, uh, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> she's photographing wildlife for a long time and um, I was always, you know, like dreaming about making documentaries uh, because when I was young, uh, I really loved uh, watching documentaries. And what I was missing a little bit was that um, if it was about reptiles and amphibians, um, it was very rarely like a natural history style. It was always somebody handling the snake, for example, and speaking about it. And it was a little bit, uh, you know, like over dramatized. So my dream was to to do like a complete natural history style. And in 2014, uh, we were both, you know, studying zoology and uh, as a hobby, uh, we started to to film wildlife. Uh, we bought a very cheap amateur uh, camera, video camera. And we started to go uh, to the field here in the Czech Republic. And uh, after some time, we realized uh, we want to, you know, present what we saw, what we filmed. So we started a YouTube channel, social media, and everything started here in the Czech Republic. We filmed um, male combat of Esculapian snakes which was really amazing and exciting to see and to film. And slowly, slowly, we, we gained more experience and more footage. And this is how it started. And then, then uh, after some time, we said to ourselves, OK, let's try to go somewhere abroad. So we tried to go to Thailand and just we were trying to find wildlife and film a story and then somehow somehow we started to create longer and longer stories yeah but uh but for me i i didn't stop uh, with uh taking pictures taking photographs and i'm still most focused uh, on photography and Mate is mostly focused on videos mm -hmm. yeah so it's great that we work in a team so we can combine this and of course um Working with snakes and venomous snakes in uh, in general 
it's great to work in a team because somebody has to, you know, work with the snake a little bit. Somebody is taking pictures or, or films. So, um, so in this, in this way, we can, uh, we can produce a documentary and also bring, um, a nice, nice photos back home, which we can then present to people. Oh yeah, I I, uh, I really like the the way that you described you described the the concept behind uh, the philosophy. So the if uh, if I mean behind behind your work because you uh, you mentioned natural history and you were speaking and uh, you you guys were speaking of like the your work as telling stories. So I was wondering, so what what kind what kind of story do that does a snake or a frog or a lizard have to tell? So how do you how do you approach this when you when you actually have the animal in front of you what 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 approach what perspective do you uh, do you take when when filming it so i think it's a lot about understanding the life of these animals and um, knowing something about their evolution about their ecology because then you then you start to have ideas like um, okay maybe it will be possible to film this kind of behavior or it will be possible to film um, this species in this habitat and then show that it lives also in a different habitat. So I think um, the big advantage of us is that uh, we both studied zoology and we have a strong background of evolutionary biology. And then, then you have these, these ideas um, and then the stories, they, they come just you know naturally in your head so it's like um when we for i i give you an example uh when we went to arizona the basically the story uh which was in our head was to show uh different rattlesnake species uh living in the desert and to show that uh the desert is actually a very diverse ecosystem it's not not the same in all areas like uh, maybe many people think but you can find there different microhabitats and you find there different species of snakes and we ended up with nine species of rattlesnakes in that documentary and e each of each species is different has a little bit different behavior uh, different morphology you know so so that's um, one example of a story which can be like, you know, showing the diversity of these animals and also their different behavior, for example, or we are also... Yeah, maybe in our last documentary uh, about snakes of the Czech Republic, uh, we tried to explain the whole year, mm, mm -hmm. maybe how snakes live uh, during the whole year, that it's different in spring, different in summer and different mm -hmm. uh, parts of the year. Yes. And uh, we are also getting into the direction of um, human snake conflict uh, topic. So we also have documentaries completely focused on this from India, for example, or snake export uh, from Uganda. So uh, there are so many ways how you can you know, uh, think or look uh, at these animals, reptiles and amphibians and uh, and you can take different approach and then uh, the story is completely different so you can explore you know different parts of uh, of their lives oh yeah that's that that's definitely that, that's definitely extremely interesting for sure especially since like yeah like you said you also have you also have to adapt to um, to what to, to the place that you that you're at because of course filming a documentary on rattlesnakes in Arizona is completely different than filming a documentary on uh, Esculapian snakes in the Czech Republic uh, and it needs so that there there comes again that, that play the different perspective that you uh, that you that you adopt so for from what you just said I understand that you you start with a with a plan at least you, you already have a clear idea in mind of what angle what uh, what approach you want to take before you before you even get to the get to the place to begin with, and then once there, uh, you try to set it uh, to set it in motion to uh, uh, to turn to turn your idea into reality. But then I was wondering, because since of course animals are not don't necessarily act the way we want on command. So what 
has it ever happened to you that some one, an idea that you that you had for a documentary just just didn't work because either you, you couldn't find the animals or they wouldn't they wouldn't behave like the the way you would have liked to and if so like how do you how do you troubleshoot that of course <laughs> Sometimes you can't get what you want and sometimes uh, you can get more than you expected. So it's, it's different. Yeah, I would say, I would say um, you never film everything what you think you will film. That's, that's why it is so exciting and never the same to film nature because you can you can produce a beautiful script before your trip and write there that, uh, for example, a black mamba will be uh, crawling through a beautiful savanna, but then maybe you don't find the snake or maybe the snake will just don't want to crawl in the place where you think it should be crawling and then um, you end up with uh, footage of black mamba on a tree, for example. Um, but uh, the beautiful thing about it is that that's, that's nature. Uh, we are basically uh, always ready with the camera and we are capturing what we see. And uh, that's why uh, many times uh, we start with some you know, opinion about how the story should should be and how it should end, how it should start. But then during the process of filming, it's changing and we are also changing the story. Um, when we were going to, to India with uh, Save the Snakes, for example, um, the non-profit USA-based organization, we we're going to film um, their uh, project, uh, the project they are uh, supporting um, in India. And we, we were thinking that it will be mostly about uh, showing um, the, the educational work of the local Indian organization. But then we ended up realizing that maybe uh, the most interesting part of the story is to show the snake rescues uh, and we were lucky to get nice snake rescues and you never know if, if you will be lucky that something like that will happen uh, when you are exactly at the location and you have one week for filming, for example. So uh, we completely changed uh, the focus of the story and I think uh, it's still a very exciting and interesting story. Um, so we, we always try to, to show the reality and that's why, that's why it's so exciting because we have some plans and then we travel to a country and we look for snakes and we never know what we will film. And after that, we try to come uh, with a story. Um, and also there are different kind of projects. Sometimes uh, we have the chance to return to the area and say to ourselves, okay, we can try to film this next time. Uh, but some documentaries are made out of trips, which were for three weeks, for example, the filming is done and then you have to edit what you have and make a story out of it. And oh yeah, for that's yeah. So that's the, that's another that's another thing that I was that I was going to ask because of course uh, we uh, all we see when we watch a documentary is um, it is related to the field component. So basically, the the animals that you found while filming and such. But so we we don't know what happens behind the scenes. So again, the like you said, the editing and the. Uh, <clears throat> All the uh, equipment maintenance and, and such and, and such and so so what 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 goes on behind the scenes of a wildlife documentary? So what uh, what do you need to prepare in advance and how do what, what is your your day to day routine in the field and after when you have to uh, to process the material? So as I said before, it's it's really uh, different each time because. Uh, once you go to a desert in the USA and then next time you go to the rainforest of Costa Rica, for example, 
and uh, each. Or you just go around our house here in the Czech Republic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, so um, oh, yeah, of course. Sometimes we we just drive uh, 15 minutes here to to the suburb area um, in our city, and we film green toads localization, for example. Not always. It's about like trips, you know, around the world, and. Each of these trips, even if they are very small, uh, requires, of course, uh, that you have all your equipment ready. You have to think uh, if you are going to film during the day or during the night. Of course, when you go out during the night, uh, it's more difficult because you have to have your lights prepared. Uh, you have to think about how much the battery stays you know uh, strong and so you have a limited amount of time and uh, when we are going for longer trips it's like a long trip for example three weeks one month which consists of these uh, repeated filming sessions so it's basically uh, you you come to a country uh, and you start to look for the animals usually we work with some local people or local snake enthusiasts, snake experts, and so on. And first you have to find some animals. And then uh, when you find them, then you, uh, then you start to film. Okay, maybe we can say that uh, there are like two, two types of work. First thing is that we film the natural uh, behavior of animals and then you don't disturb the animal at all and you just film it uh, and watch it from a distance. And that's how you can get some uh, rare footage of some special behavior. And uh, sometimes we handle snakes, we use special tools for it and uh, we work a little bit with the snake, for example, to stop it and film it uh, from close distance and uh, get some uh, some special shots we which we need for example yes yeah, so it's always a combination of these these two approaches um also yeah i can say it um uh, or, or sh uh, you know explain it in an example so for example when you are filming a behavior of of a snake uh you are just filming what you see and then sometimes you want to you want to work with the snake and for example film a detail of the head detail of the scales when you want to show some kind of special characteristics of the species so um it's always it's always a, a process where again we have some kind of you know plans for how it's going to be and then it's a little bit different than we are we are planning uh, at the place. You also have to think a lot about the timing of the filming. For example, in deserts, you need to film early in the morning because then it's too hot for the animals. Uh, in the rainforests, uh, you have to be always, you know, um, prepared to get totally wet and things like that. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it really differ, differs a lot. Oh yeah, that's uh, I can I can I can definitely I can definitely imagine yeah the contrast between deserts and rainforests must be must be definitely striking <laughs> no <laughs> doubt on that and so since since you also mentioned uh, you also mentioned that you uh, you often reach out to you collaborate with uh, uh, with local uh, herb enthusiasts or uh, scientists or snake rescuers as you like you mentioned indeed you uh, you work with save the snakes and um, multi cantimanti for snake rescue mm -hmm. call which is the, the documentary you were you, you were referring to before about uh, human snake conflict in india and then also uh, with Matt good and uh, and his students in arizona for the for the the desert of rattlesnakes so how do you uh, how do you uh, how did you make did you make these connections so how did you reach out to uh, uh, to these people, to to these uh, to experts in on the other side of the world, and propose them to uh, propose them to collaborate for uh, for a documentary. So, mm -hmm. how did we uh, get in contact with Save the Snakes? Um, 
of what's great about this work is that um, uh, all you do, you put online, it's on YouTube, and then uh, it's a little bit easier to, to make contact and people, people often already know what you did before and then maybe they, they get interested in working with you. So, uh, so it was basically uh, Michael Starkey from Save the Snakes writing to us that he saw our uh, short documentary Snake Protectors on Bali, where we had uh, footage of King Cobra and other snakes. And he asked us if we want to go with them to India and film a story about the project they are supporting there. For example, like this. So that was really great. And we were very honored that they contacted us for us, <laughs> two people from the Czech Republic it was kind of surreal that somebody from the USA is contacting us and asking us to, to film a documentary for them. So that was really very exciting moment for us. And um, then in terms of um, other contacts, we usually, we usually just connect with, uh, with these people through social media and uh, we discuss uh, the possibilities for a cooperation during our trip. Yeah. And and now it's it's much more easy because uh, it's easier because uh, you can show them our work. We we already did quite a lot of documentaries or videos, so it's easy to to present our work and ask if they are interested in some cooperation. Yes, and I think it's it's uh, uh, you know good for both sides that uh, we are doing our work, and also we love to promote the work of people who who do great job in rescuing snakes, uh, snake research, snake conservation. That's that's why we are doing it because we want to educate people about snakes and reptiles and amphibians, and we also want to help saving these animals so uh, any videos about these people who are doing great job are are i think really important so so that's that's why we are doing it uh and uh yeah we uh, was uh what i was going to uh what i was going to ask next is well first of all uh, just uh, since you were you were talking about yeah um, collaborations and such. By the way, I mean, Italy also has a great herb diversity, just dropping it there in case, you know, whatever. All right. Of course, <laughs> of course. Great. Actually, <laughs> yes, Italy, Italy is um, interesting for us. Um, um, we would love to, to film a story which is a little bit different uh, than most of our work. Uh, it should be connected a little bit with the historical role of snakes. Uh, we'd love, love to, already. to go to Kokulo, to, to the ceremony uh, where they um, put the, the snakes on uh, Saint Dominic and you know uh present the story with a little bit you know different perspective because from the historical point of view snakes have a very negative reputation and all of this uh so uh actually uh before we were planning to come to italy this may but due to coronavirus all the ceremony was cancelled so we had to cancel our plan but we are definitely interested in coming to Italy, so we'll definitely let you know. Ooh, uh, I'm, de I'm definitely, I'm, I'm definitely going to going to write, note that down. Um, you know, this is but... exactly how you can make contacts through internet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, indeed, that's yeah, that's uh, yeah, now that I think about it, yeah, that's this might be hopefully this will be a good example. And then yeah, mm -hmm. just to uh, just give a bit of context to um, to to our audience. So yeah, in uh, in this tiny little village in Italy called Coculo, like every year there is this uh, this amazing ceremony. I've never, I, I haven't been there yet, but mm -hmm. I definitely want to, uh, at least before I die. So basically people uh, go out in the fields and catch as many four-lined snakes as, as they can. Like the, the four-lined snake is a, is a very common species down there, completely harmless, and they 
they, they basically are behave like kittens, so no problem at all. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, they all the, they all parade with uh, like holding them and putting them around their necks and on this huge statue of Saint Dominic that yeah they, they parade through the through the alley of uh, the alley of the uh, the alley of the, of the town. So yeah, that's 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 basically what the what the ceremony is all about. I know it sounds crazy, but trust me, it's it's quite a sight to behold. So yeah, that's definitely worthy of a documentary, I would say. <laughs> yes, because I, I think it's fascinating that they are actually uh, having a positive, um, you know, relationship to snakes. Because you know, church and religion, from the historical point of view, has a very, very negative, uh, like, opinion about snakes. Snakes always play a negative role in the history. Uh, so this is a very, very fascinating example, which we would like to show and explore more uh, the other historical, you know, things. Uh, we have a Sculapian snake in the Czech Republic, and that's that's the snake which is in the symbol of uh, Pharmacy. of pharmacies, for example, you know. So it's like a very, very famous, famous snake species. So uh, it would be a little bit like a different approach. Uh, we were already checking also some, you know, parts from the Bible, what it says about snakes and, you know, trying to, to compare the different points of view and then showing the ceremony in Kokuo where actually religious people have nothing against snakes and actually, you know, they are worshiping them. It's, it would be, I think, a very strong story. Mm. Oh yeah, oh yeah, for sure. And then I see, uh, I see that um, Andrea Pozzi, a friend of mine, fellow herpetologist. He he's now based in England, but he's uh, he's a fellow Italian. He's also he's also very enthusiastic on the idea of uh, of a documentary on the on the snakes of Coculo. So if you, I would say, if you uh, if you're if you're looking for any for any kind of support in Italy, he he might he might be a great person to go to in that uh, in that yeah. case. Uh, I was, so I was yeah, thinking that's... about contacting him. Yes. <laughs> oh well, I'm I'm pretty sure he's gushing right now after uh, <laughs> now that you've said that. But yeah, so um, I'll I'll leave that to to you to discuss at a later stage. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, you uh, you mentioned yeah you you said that the, the before that the coronavirus has had an impact on your on your work as well because of course all travel was uh, was blocked for uh, was blocked for a long time uh, but still uh, yeah the, what i've noticed is that in like between last year and this year you have uh, you have focused indeed on uh, on the european uh, scenario like more closely since again uh, international travel was was not an option uh, so like how um, how do you think your work uh, might encourage people to get more uh, to get to learn more about the herpetofauna like in their backyard if, to to put it uh to put it that way so uh to realize that there's like amazing amazing herbs are not on on the other side of an ocean but you can also find them not quite close to close to home be it czech republic or greece or italy or wherever so in terms of like um, education of people and spreading uh you know the uh, the love for herpetofauna to others. I think it's great that um, Susanna she actually she's great with uh, education of children maybe because she works in a forest kindergarten. You can explain what what does it mean? <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's a special kindergarten uh, when we are the whole day outside uh, in the nature. It's like beautiful combination of uh, teaching kids and uh, being in nature and uh, with animals, for example. Mm -hmm. So uh, we actually now know a group of, of uh, younger children, about 13 years old, for example, and um, uh, we met them uh, during some uh, courses which were originally organized by friends ornithologists so they were catching birds and you know showing them to to the children um, and doing some monitoring and we joined and we all we are also helping uh, the ornithologists to do their work but also we try to find snakes 
uh, frogs, newts, and we are showing them to to kids. And actually, some of some of them started to be really, really excited about herpetofauna. Some of them even started their own YouTube channels and <laughs> and started to present videos. So um, I would say it's it's very surprising to me because. Uh, I was never even like expecting that somebody will watch our videos about snakes on YouTube, that somebody will be interested. And then suddenly uh, we have younger people who are reaching to us or they want to go to the field with us and they are very excited to see, to see for example, green toad or, you know, Esculapian snake. And, and it's really a great, great feeling because, uh, of course, it's important to educate younger generations. So um, somehow, somehow, I hope we have some impact and uh, there are more and more people interested in um, herpetofauna in our country and also in, in the region of Central Europe. Oh no! Like I, I, I completely, I completely agree. That is the the, the feeling that you have when you see that uh, that your that your actions are uh, are bringing more people to uh, at least uh, acknowledge the existence of of these rather unpopular animals. That that's definitely the best feeling ever. And of course, like no doubt, you. I, I'm pretty sure. Like even though I'm, I, I only I can only talk from an outsider perspective. You are having a big impact on this in this in this regard, guys. So. So uh, heads off for that. And uh, now to uh, to go back to what I uh, to what I said uh, to what I said in the in the very beginning. So uh, indeed, one one thing and what you what you also uh, remarked. Uh, one thing that sets you apart from a lot of other um, broad products like film products on, uh, on wildlife is. Uh, your your attitude and the the rationality behind it, because like you said, if you go on Animal Planet and you watch well nearly any uh, snake or in, in general reptile center program, you will see you know the classic guy standing in front of a in front of a viper and saying, "Oh my God, this snake is so dangerous! It could kill me in half an hour with just one bite." And, and in the meantime, the snake is just laying there doing absolutely nothing. So <laughs> I'm like, why do you even have to be that dramatic? Is it really necessary? <laughs> what's 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 the point in that? So um, could you maybe ex uh, expand on like how that how your work is go goes. Um, in some way against this stereotyping of uh, of of, uh, of reptiles and how uh, how this could be counterproductive so this portrayal of them as the as such dangerous and uh, scary animals mm. so yeah it's it's exactly as you said when when we see most of the documentaries we, we are just like you know staring at it and we we just can't believe what we see because um the behavior most presenters uh, show there is is totally not necessary, uh, and and as as you said, it's sending a very bad message about the animals. Uh, and all of our encounters actually with these like deadly venomous snakes are very calm, uh, you know, very very peaceful you just realize how peaceful these animals are like uh, um, our last big trip was in costa rica uh, in december january and uh, we were focusing quite a lot on uh, terciopelos um, commonly known as ferdelands uh, and uh, you know this snake has a super terrible reputation everybody just tells you that these snakes are crazy they will jump on you um, and more and more things uh, which should scare you. And we were working with around 20 individuals. Uh, at least three at, big ones. At least so far. several big individuals. And, and these snakes were amazingly calm. Uh, they didn't strike. It was, it was such a pleasure to work with them. And, and we actually never had 
a terrible experience with snakes because they they if you if you ha- give them a chance they will never try to to you know be defensive the the first thing they try to do is to to escape to to go away so um i think i think actually it's uh, it's a good chance for us to to provide a different perspective and I, I like that it's it's actually so different and in in a certain way very exciting to to present a very calm filming session with the black mamba you put your camera half a meter from the mamba you do slow movements nothing happens the snake is friendly you know in 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 this kind of you know uh, era in which we live where everything needs to be dramatic and otherwise people are not watching it uh, i i find it i find it very uh, very cool to have this chance to to show a different perspective and uh, the most important thing for me is uh, is the message which the video shows about the animal so even though some of these people in the documentaries there are you know giving uh, correct information. They are trying to educate people about snakes, for example. Uh, the 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 emotion which the viewer gets from this dramatic video is okay. Maybe I learned something about this animal, but it's super dangerous and it will kill me if if I come come close to it. You know. And of course, these animals are dangerous and they can kill you. But uh, it depends on your behavior. Behavior. If we are behaving like nicely, we are calm, or making slow movements. The, the snake is not scared. But if you are jumping around and uh, making a lot of movements, then of course the snake is scared. And uh, if uh, if he can't uh, escape, he will protect himself and can attack and bite you or something. Of and course. that's what uh, these people in the usual yeah, documentaries want wants to show mm-hmm. that yeah, yeah. yeah it's it's dangerous and I can show you it's it's biting a lot but it's about the behavior of the of the human of the people yeah from from my point of view as a filmmaker actually um, I usually don't have a motivation to to t- touch the snake too much you know I'm just admiring. Uh, its beauty, uh, you know, observing its behavior in its natural habitat, and it's it's like a spectacle for me. I'm just standing with my camera and and filming what's what's happening. I I don't have too much like motivation to hold the snakes all the time, you know, on the hook and show it to the video. So, um, uh, but yeah, maybe that's that's a strange you know thinking and most people have it differently and they they want to present the snake in their hands i don't know and uh we never catch snakes behind the head like mm. uh, because it's uh, stressful for the snake and if we handle snakes we use uh snake hooks and tongs and it's much more comfortable for the snake and uh, it's much more safe and yeah. it's, it's safer for us yes I, I think for example handling the snake behind the head it's uh, only necessary if you want to uh, you know uh, milk the snake and extract the venom or during the the rescues when you you are in a very difficult situation and you can't get the snake out of a net or something uh, you know otherwise i don't see a point why you should you know for example grab it uh, by the head and uh, stress the animal and of course after that snakes usually get more defensive so we're trying to to use use tools work very calmly and we we really never had a bad experience with snakes when people ask us about terrible experiences from our travels it's it's usually like uh, emergency landing with a plane and car <laughs> crash and things like that but nothing with snakes actually comes to our mind it's it's always a very peaceful work and 
uh, you have a great feeling after a filming session with the snake and when you are releasing it back to its natural habitat it's it's amazing feeling and you it, it never gets it never gets old you all you want more always no that's this is this is definitely an, an extremely important message and i mean I have to uh, I have to admit that um, I, I've I've grown up like watching um, the documentaries from by uh, you know the Steve Irwin Austin Stevens and like the uh, those guys who uh, although of course they like you said they uh, they were trying to educate they, they were uh, including educational content they were they were trying to uh, um, to raise awareness uh, in the in the general public uh, about about herbs. But yeah, that, that was all very dramatic, very dramatic stuff. And I mean, back when I back, back then, I loved it. I mean, that, that that's how I uh, that's how my passion for reptiles was uh, basically basically arose. And I was wondering, so why do you think like so many people still like that kind of that kind of product, like the sensationalized and super dramatic uh, depictions of these animals? Because again, there's this is the this is the mainstream. Like you you are opening up. Uh, perhaps a new, uh, a new, a, a better way, but so far the stand that that has been the standard. So um, yeah, just uh, just a note to what you said uh, about Steve Irwin and Austin Stevens. Of course, when I was when I was a child, when I was younger, uh, I was watching these documentaries. Uh, I was super excited about uh, these documentaries. Uh, you know, it was it was different times, and they were one of the first who started to, you know, uh, even show these animals to the public and try to educate people yeah, about brought, these animals. They brought yeah. so many people to snakes. Yes, I think. yes, uh, and that was the the beginning. So uh, I think it, it's it's not. Uh, good to like say they did it in a totally bad way as you said now after after i went on my path of being um a, you know wildlife filmmaker herpetologist i have different opinion and i i don't like the way they actually present um, what they do and how they handled the the snakes in many cases um, so that's why we are doing it in a different way. But um, at that time, they started something totally different. And thanks to them, I would say thousands of people started to be interested in reptiles and amphibians. Um, and, but back to your question, I think people still do it this way because it's just what, what people love to watch they love to watch drama yeah and it's much more fun maybe and uh it's about adrenaline and um i don't know people like to watch scary things <laughs> mm. so from from our experience for example um I, I think when you when you want to bring more people um to the topic for example uh you have to use some kind of like drama because uh even even we we get many comments under our videos from people who for example they write that they are super scared of snakes but they just can't stop watching our videos so that that's just just an example so uh um uh on our youtube channel uh people mostly watch videos about venomous snakes uh, because maybe they uh, they are thinking that it will be dramatic. That's why they, they click on it. And then we have the chance to present them our way of, uh, you know, showing snakes and so on. So I think in general, it works like this. It's just a, just a question if a person or somebody who is producing videos or documentaries about uh, these animals if they want to go this way and go for you know more views and do it in a dramatic way and that's something what we don't want to do we really want to uh, rather have smaller audience but slowly slowly build a bigger audience by by showing the correct message from our point of view um, 
And so, may, maybe um, people are looking for uh, something different than uh, you can find mostly on YouTube or uh, in the documentaries because there are not so many not so many videos about like natural history of snakes that's why we are different and and why people are watching our, video, mm. our, our so videos <laughs> that that's what what's uh, actually like really interesting to us because um, um, this was this, this was not a plan uh, we we 2 years ago we didn't have a plan that we will make uh, this kind of footage because we know that it's something different and we know that there will be many people watching it we were just you know doing uh this this work or at the beginning it was it was more like a hobby because we were students then we had different full-time jobs and in the free time we were filming wildlife editing presenting documentaries and then after five years uh, on YouTube, uh, more people started to watch our videos. Many of them commented that uh, what we present is very different from other, you know, uh, videos about snakes. And so it came naturally. It was not like really planned. And we are really happy for this because. Uh, uh, a few years ago, if you ask me, uh, I wouldn't tell you that I think that this kind of videos, natural history snake videos, can be can be successful on YouTube because I thought people really want to watch only dramatic dramatic stuff. No, yeah, exactly, and that that that's why uh, yeah, that's why I said that you were you're opening up a new uh, a new a new venue for. Uh, for future uh, wildlife filmmakers as, as well as, or at least, uh, at least I think so. And the last question that I have uh, for you ties directly to uh, to what we just, to what you just said. Uh, so you said that you that uh, you have you've had comments under your videos of people who, uh, despite being dead dead scared of snakes, just couldn't stop watching. So. Also, considering that uh, how different your your product is compared to compared to the the standard that we've just discussed, like uh, what's what has been the response, the the general response to uh, to your work so far since you uh, since you started in two thousand and fourteen, all the way up to up to today. So the response is very positive, and and we are super happy about it uh, because you know. You are presenting a video about first about snakes, which are not the most favorite animals for, for most people, you know. You yeah. are presenting it in a way which is not very dramatic, not like super interesting for somebody who seeks some adrenaline. So you think that it might be boring for somebody just to watch a snake uh, do its own thing. Uh, with the natural sound background for 10 minutes and people people yet comment that they love it and uh, throughout the time we realized that people or at least our audience which is now around 80,000 subscribers they really want to see snake footage so the more snake footage we put in the video uh, the more happy are the viewers. So, um, so that's that for me. That's that's the ideal ideal formula, you know. So yeah, it's interesting because sometimes we try to uh, upload videos about uh, other nature things, mm -hmm. about other animals, and it's usually not so favorite. Mm -hmm. So people don't yeah. like it so much. <laughs> in in our in our example, it's really we can post a safari video or video about any yes. other other kind of wildlife and you would think that those are the animals which most people want to see but no our audience just wants to see snakes snakes <laughs> <laughs> so basically now you have now you have the odd you have the, the polar opposite problem <laughs> yeah 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 so yeah we are actually trying to to make new playlists of, um, for example, safari review videos about national parks and showing other wildlife also. And we're trying to build a section of our audience which will be interested also in, uh, um, you know, other kinds of wildlife. 
And last year we also started to film behind the scenes series. So um, that's that's kind of new for us. So it will also give people an insight uh, into our work. Yeah, we released the first episode from Kenya last last week, I yes, think. Yes, yes. Nice. Still have to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Since I see uh, yeah, there are... Of course, there are some... Uh, under our videos, sometimes there are comments that snakes are bad and uh, that they should be killed, all of them, and something like that. But it's just the minor minority of mm. comments. Yeah, it's actually quite rare. Yeah, the, the, there's always going the, the, there, there's always going to be that person. I mean, that uh, I, I doubt that's ever going to change. Uh, so, Matei and Susanna, thank you so much again for being here today. And uh, of course, uh, we all wish you uh, nothing but the best for for your future work, especially once you once you can start traveling again after the after the pandemic. And for the audience, uh, you you definitely should check out the Living Zoology YouTube channel or. Uh, look, look up their videos on the on the website because it's definitely it's definitely worth your time and then some. So please uh, please give it a thought at least. And then the statements there will be back next week, uh, next Friday to be to be precise with Dr. Sergio Balaguer Reina, who's going to talk uh, to uh, tell us all about a uh, uh, family of animals that we haven't uh, really addressed so uh, so far. That is the crocodilians. So thank you so much for everyone for joining today and I hope to see you all next week. In the meantime, have a great weekend. Bye. Thank you very much for having us. It was an honor. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you guys.